Hey y'all, Jesse Peterson here with Let's Make Art. I'm a mixed media artist and I love art journaling and I'm here to show you some fun stuff with art journaling. We've got Keenan here. Hello. Our camera guy, hype man. Background music. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> I like that one, that's good. Um, yeah, so we, we like to work in themes in art journaling and um, this theme that we're working in right now is called Record and Reflect. So we're just kind of processing all the things that have happened in 2020, you know, just a couple things, just right? Just a few. Um, and, and, and kind of just using that idea to explore things in our art journal and try some fun techniques. Today, we are going to do this project. Uh. Thank you. Um, the upside to the down. And we're going to be using um, sponges to do some stenciling with our pigment powder. So when I say that, I mean these little wedge sponges here. So let's go over the supplies for the project that we're going to do. We are using this collection of Vicky Boone powder pigments. Fun. And if you're a subscriber, you would have gotten that in our box, but you can also just use whatever paint you got around, that's fine. <clears throat> we are gonna use this stencil. It's called the Stencil It Stencil. I put a little piece of paper in here so you can see all four designs. And speaking of the paper, you'll need a little extra paper for this if you wanna do um, these little strips. I just used some cardstock and I cut it into these little strips like that. So. Whatever you like to do there is gonna be just fine. <clears throat> the colors that we're using from the collection are going to be these four colors. We have blue berry pie, blue Hawaiian, mm. and I love these names, um, orange slice, mm -hmm. and crushed pineapple. Ooh. We use those four. Pineapple's good in a burger. Oh uh, yeah, it is. He's already on the yep. treats, you guys. Yep. <laughs> um, okay, and we're gonna use Yes Paste. You will have a container like this in your box or you can use the big guy. I like to work from this for most and keep this when I'm on the go. But have that and I like to use my palette knife for that. I have my X-Acto for trimming out things and on whatever brush you got around for the background is gonna be fine if you wanna use your oval mop or your round eight, that's fine. I use a pencil to do my journaling. You can use a pen if you like and a ruler if you wanna be able to cut some straight edges and you are good to go. <laughs> Nice. Um, let's see here. Um, so we got our technique card and our prompt card. We like to use those two in combination to make projects. You can mix and match these if you like. If you like the prompts and you want to go a whole other way with the technique, that's totally fine. It's up to you. It's your art journal. So these are just um, sort of jumping off points for you. Yeah. Just a little inspiration and you can take it however you want. So the prompt today is sweet and sour. Delicious. Right. You're already getting hungry for lunch? Always. Um, the prompt says, when tough things happen, it can be hard to see the upside to the down when you are in the thick of it. And I think that's so true. So <clears throat> try making a two column list in your journal and one column list some of the tough things you've experienced in 2020. And the next column, try writing about something that had a positive outcome, dis outcome despite the hardship. As you look back on the year, maybe you'll be able to savor the sweet with the sour. So just kind of recognizing that even with tough things, some positive things can kind of come along. And I think it's just great to, I don't know, process that kind of stuff and make it a visual in your journal. So that's what we're gonna do. Now, when I do art journaling, I really like to recognize that this is my time to be creative, that I've set aside um, and be kind of intentional about that. And <clears throat> so I like to just like remind myself by like taking a deep breath and setting attention to, you know, make this moment like be like in the moment kind of thing. So it might be weird, but you can just do it with me if you want. Take a okay. deep breath, breathe out. <sighs> okay, let's set in attention. I was thinking about how um, art journaling is as a small action of creativity for us. It's not a time for being perfect. Um, it's more of a time of just playing and processing things and just exploring things. That's why I love art journaling. So our intention can be just focusing on the small acts and being in the moment. So that's nice. what I, I think there. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we can get started. I got my art journal blank page ready to go. I'm gonna steal my clips from the other one, put them on here. The first step is going to be just painting the background of these two pages um, with our pigment, which is so fun. We can do this blue Hawaiian and I'm just going to tap a little pigment onto my palette and this is pretty like strong pigment like so you can start out with a small amount and then if you need to get more you can get more 
It goes a long way. That's what I'm saying. It goes a long way. Oh, that's my oval mop brush fell on the floor. I was like thinking that that would have been a better brush. Oh. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> there we go. Sneaky Mavis. Yeah. Roval, mobile. Mobile up mus. Yeah. Brush. Could get that one all crazy. So then I just named her Mavis because that was easier to say than oval mobile mop brush. Okay. So this is just going to be like a light wash, like watercolor would be when you just add pigment to the, a water to the pigment. Excuse me. A little something on there. Get that out of there. Get out of there. Hmm. Brought some dust from the floor. Something. Keenan cleaned up our studio. It looks so nice in here. I did. He stirred up some dust, maybe. Just a I little. Definitely did. <laughs> but all that cleaning will be great for my allergies. My voice has been scratchy lately. And if you want to protect your page, <clears throat> take some of the extra paper I recommended having around and just put it right under there like that and you won't get paint on the other page behind it so I'm not trying to be perfect with this it's just a background so it's fine however it turns out it's gonna be great and I kind of like it being sort of a light wash because then the contrast of the stencil we're gonna put on top of it will um, show more and I'm going to do my orange background even lighter than my example, so my yellow will stand out a little more. Oh, okay, so. We like yellow. We like the orange-yellow combo. You do like that. I like it. We, we like it. Okay, so let me tap out some. Let's just put, let me rinse this brush off. All right, all right. Tap out some yellow. Wait, no, I need orange for the background. Y'all, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask questions. It's Everything's efficient. fine. It's, it's fine. efficient to get multiple colors ready. Yeah, might at as the same well. Time. Yeah. Might as well. There. Whoa, that was a lot of blueberry pie. Perfect. I don't know if that was on camera and you saw that, but it was a lot. It's fine. Do you wanna, I can move this over if you like. I was just going to ask, actually. Thank you. Thank you. I can just do it like that. Does that work? Okay, I'm gonna move yeah. my scrap paper over under this page. And I'm gonna do a light orange on this page. Mm. I just love how that <coughs> pigment mixes in water. It's so fun. I'm just adding extra water because I want this orange to be lighter. That's a pretty bright orange. Let's see how light that is. Oh, yeah, this is nice. Yeah, that looks good. Mm. I think any darker, I mean, I kind of did it darker the, on this version. I get to do these projects a couple times, so it's fun. And then our yellow will stand out nicely. I get to do it a couple times and learn something so I can share what I learned with you. Which is really convenient. That's an upside. Yeah. Okay, I'm liking that. Okay. Good, good. Just rinse my brush here. Knock off some of that water. All right. Okay, so we'll let this dry for a minute. And while we're letting that dry, we can cut out some of our collage paper. Now we've been using this collage paper for our other projects, but we still have lots of good bits left over to use. And you can decide however you want to do it. I'm just going to suggest these things. So I'm going to um, trim out the downside and the upside for us. Just using a ruler and my exacto knife. You can totally use scissors. That's just fine. I'm just going to wing it. I'm going to show you. You can just wing it. It's fine. Wing it. I love winging it. <laughs> it's my favorite. Now, I cut this a little close to that one, so I might 
if you do that, that's fine. I just like having kind of the same on both sides, so I'm going to do that. Okay, so we got those. What else can we cut out? Let's see. This paper's getting dry. It's getting there. All right. Oh, nice. Ooh, those dry pretty quick, don't they? Yeah, it does dry quickly, which is really nice. It's not, it's not like acrylic where it takes a while because of the extra things that are added. Let's cut out this pink part and let's cut out this blue part. Well, it's more of a turquoise, but you know what I'm saying. So we got that ready. And then I think I used a little bit of this background for the other one. So we'll cut that out. Whoa, that's okay. We'll just move it over a little. No big deal. It's fine. Everything's fine. Wing it. Yeah. <coughs> Okay, and then I like this little envelope background. So we'll use a little bit of that. Okay, We've got some paper strips we can tear and collage and have fun with. We still got some extra pieces left over to do other things, so that's nice. Okay. Oh yeah, it's getting there. <coughs> okay, let's put our collage paper to the side real fast, and we will work on our stenciling next. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. Okay. So this stencil is great because I. I think I was going to bring an example of that. I keep forgetting. That cool traveler's journal notebook that I like has the elastics and these just kind of fit in there. They have these little notches and it's nice so it folds. But um, for doing art, I kind of like it to be more flat. So I'm going to bend it back a little bit so it can be how I want it. And I'm going to do my yellow first. And I'm going to add a little more water well not a little more a lot more because there was no water on the yellow yet i think i might need a little bit more pigment so i'm gonna just tap a little bit more on there because the sponge absorbs the paint so i like to have a little more of that happening can you see that keenan it's a little far there you go so yeah just mixing that pigment yep so it's not like as light as the orange was. I want it to be a little thicker because I want it to be um, to show up on the orange. Okay, and then I'm just gonna use my wedge. I'm gonna pick up some of that pigment. And I'm gonna hold down my teardrop. And I'm just gonna tap that on like that. So it's pretty simple. And I wanna keep your stencil nice and flat and I told you that sponge is thirsty, so I'm going to need some more pigment. So I'm going to do this one-handed because I'm, I'm able to do that. <laughs> I feel really great about it. <laughs> I just want to keep the stencil flat, you guys. So I should have mixed more paint. So you can learn from me. Mix more paint so you don't have to hold this stencil down with one hand while you mix paint. But if you have to do it, you can do it. I believe in you. I just wanted to mix it thick, but I remember now that the sponge really likes absorbing that. Okay. You may end up having to do it because we're going to move the stencil, out, stencil down and put some more on there. Now I'm going to just stop. Do you see how these um, um, teardrops are cut off? Yes. I'm just not going to do those ones because I want to move this down and do some more and I don't want to have to worry about lining those up. So I'm going to do that one guy right there maybe but none of the ones that are cut off. So that's gonna be fine for me. And I'm just gonna hit these other ones just in case I didn't get a good amount on there. Okay, moment of truth. Gotta dun, do dun, the, dun. the peel and reveal here. 
Oh yeah. I like that contrast. Oh, yeah. That's nice. Okay. <clears throat> and I'm just gonna shift this over like that because I got that one little teardrop there and that's gonna be great. I'm gonna put some more pigment on my palette. Can you see this pigment or do I need to move it over? I can see it. Great. Put some more water on here. I like mixing this with the paintbrush. It makes it easy. You can do it however you want. I love it, I love it, I love it. Okay, Get my sponge. And we will repeat the process. So super easy. I know some people struggle with stencils and it's all about just keeping your stencil from moving and shifting and keeping it flat. And <clears throat> you should be able to achieve similar results. Again, I'm gonna avoid those cut off ones because I think I might wanna just put one more row. But I got that one little guy in there, so I'm gonna go for it. Oh yeah. And then I'm just gonna put, I think I'm gonna put like two more right there. Oh, I did three, two and a half there. I like it. And maybe two right there. I just barely got enough pigment to make this happen. So that's perfect. I love those raindrops. Ah, they're kind of like lemon drops. Drop, lemon drop. Yay. Now I want to show you the difference between this one and the one that I created originally. There's a lot more contrast there, so that's really nice. And the key to that is just making your orange light a little bit lighter. Okay, now onto the blueberry pie dots. I'm going to just quickly clean this off though, <clears throat> so that if it bumps the other page or whatever, it doesn't get big on. I'm just gonna use a baby wipe, but you can use whatever you got. Wet paper towel will do fine. This is really easy to clean up. That's convenient. Goodness yeah, gracious. It is great. I always have baby wipes in my studio just for easy cleanup. I mean, I have children, so I have baby wipes everywhere in my More life More important right now. question. Yes. Do you like lemon drop candies? Yes, I do. You do? Do I you not? I can't decide. <gasps> you can't decide? No. What is it? I, it's just, just too sour? Some, they're just like either too tart or too sweet. I like lemon heads, like that one. That kind of candy, I think it's good. Because it starts out sour too. and then it gets sweet. Hmm. So I'm kind of using this side as the upside because it feels like happy sunshine raining down on me. I don't know, like in a good way. <laughs> Does that make sense? That totally makes sense. But you could reverse the colors and have that be like blue raindrops. Like that's the downside. But What if you did the yellow on the blue and the blue <clears> on the orange? If you did the yellow and the blue, then you would end up getting green. So you want to stick with the same family of color instead of opposites on the color mm, wheel. Okay. Unless you want green okay. and then that's totally cool too. Mm. But I like, I like that you're thinking about these things. I get it. Okay, so we are going to rinse our brush. I might have needed to start with more clean water, but it's gonna be all right. <laughs> it's fine. Really yellow That Kool-Aid looks tasty. What does it look like, lemonade? Yeah, like the packages of lemonade. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I just added some pigment, I mean water to our pigment. I keep saying pigment. It's fine. That's looking good. Now, if you want, you can just turn your sponge a different way. You got two sponges in your kit, so you can like use one for warm colors and one for cool colors, whatever. You can wash them really easily, and then uh, it might stain the um, sponge, but um, it won't like transfer the color. I've tested that out already, already but I'm just gonna use another one because it's not easy for me to go and clean mine really quickly. Okay, so I got the pigment on there, and I'm just gonna tap it on. Now, if you do it lightly, you'll get kind of like a, a variegated sort of texture. And if you do it a couple more times, like heavier, then it'll get darker. So you can do you, whatever you want to do. Do a variance of Do a little of bit both. of more. 
and do it back and forth. I'm just going to add some more water to my pigment and keep on trucking here. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I just love how fun these stencils are and how portable they are. I mean, because you could draw like some shapes, but this is kind of a fun process. Mm -hmm. I like stencils. Too. Okay, I'm feeling good about that. Okay, so kind of check and see you got everything you wanted on there, and then we can move it down. So I think that looks like a good spot. Liking mm -hmm. that. Mm hmm. Add a little more water to the pigment. Oh, I love this blueberry pie blue. It's so pretty. It's so vibrant. It's a dark, vibrant blue. Mm -hmm. That's how I feel about it. Yeah, just dabbing this, not like pressing down, because if you use a lot of pressure to press down, then it might make the paint skip under the stencil. So we're just lightly dabbing that on. Kind of like how some people might apply makeup, just kind of. Hmm. That's how I apply makeup. Yeah. <laughs> just lightly dab it on till I'm blue. Till you're blue, till you have blueberry pie all over your face. Yes. Or you could just eat blueberry pie. That's you're what I was just gonna case. say. <laughs> makeup that is colored like blueberry pie actually means blueberry pie for me. Actually, I don't like fruit pie. No, what's your favorite pie? Pumpkin. Mine's pecan. Hmm. I had a really good one on Thanksgiving. I was really excited about it. Hmm. I haven't had pumpkin pie this year. Well, we should remedy that real fast, like right around lunchtime, I'm thinking. Okay, peel, reveal, we got it. Oh. Uh. Yeah, yeah, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I like it. Okay, I'm gonna take a minute to wipe this down so I don't have to worry about it later. It's easier to get it off when it's still wet too, just so you know. Just a little tip. Pro tip. And I just love using my cutting mat for all the things. for gluing, for cutting, for cleaning stuff up like this. But if you're gonna use this again, you just wanna make sure you got it all off there. Okay, and then got our background set. Now we can get into our um, collaging and journaling. <clears throat> so I think while we're just letting this dry for a little bit, we'll clip it down again. Oh, I'm just so excited. This turned out better than the first time. I'm so excited. Where's my other clip? There we go. Now I listed out some things, but I'm excited to hear about what other people are gonna list out. Okay, work on that in a second. So we're gonna do this and this next. And I got all these strips of paper <laughs> ready to go. <laughs> I'm just moving things around. It's fine, it's fine, everything's fine. Okay, so I like this one. I'm just gonna tear it like this. So that's about the same. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Close, first try. There we go, so I got that. And then got this pink one and turn it this way. Okay. Trim it right there. And I kind of like having it have a straight edge on the inside of the paper. So I'm just going to cut that right under the 40 there with oh. my ruler. Oh my gosh, I got my work. I'm all messy over here. 
This happens on my desk upstairs, too. <laughs> We're just talking about how I will have all my supplies out, and then I'll have this tiny little spot to work in. Like, why do I do this? I have this giant desk. I have all this room, but I end up being like right here because <laughs> all my stuff is everywhere. Bitty, bitty working space. <laughs> that sounds like an Aladdin quote to me. <laughs> bitty, bitty living space. <clears throat> okay, so we got the upside part. You can get a hold of this. Do you guys ever have a hard time just picking up a piece of paper? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, there we go. Upside. And now let's do the downside. I'm going to trim that little bit of pink off because I'm thinking I don't want that pink on that side. I want to mm -hmm. keep the good contrast that we got going on. So I'm going to do that. OK. And I'm going to tear it right there. Now, if you tear towards yourself when the image is up, then you'll get like a nice little white edge. If you tear down, then it will not give you that edge. Just a little tip. I just kind of like tearing sometimes in my collage because it gives it a little softer edge, which is nice sometimes. Okay, I'm going to do... You can really see that edge on a darker page like this, which I like. I just, it's so satisfying to tear this paper. I yeah. love it. I love it. My three-year-old also loves to tear paper. Oh, yeah? Yes. Well, it feels good sometimes. <laughs> I, one of my daughters liked tearing paper, and she would keep it under her pillow. <laughs> I would go in there and find all these random things under her pillow, little trinkets, <laughs> and then nice. torn paper. <laughs> Not really sure what's happening there, but... It makes me think of um, J.M. Barry's um, the book, Peter Pan, has a reference to <clears throat> the mom going and filing through their thoughts and getting them in order after their sleep at night, like That's cool so that they can wake up all like ready to go. And I just thought, seeing all the random things that she puts under her pillow, it kind of gives me a clue to what she was thinking about that day and like, you know, just brushing the day away and like giving her a fresh start with no paper under her pillow. It's kind of <laughs> like that book. That's funny. <laughs> so sort of obscure reference. All right. That's a good reference. I liked it. Upside, downside. We got that and we can glue that down and then we can focus on our next step, which I thought it would be fun to tone the paper to get you that contrast. Now, if that's like, crazy then don't do it but I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna do it now so that it can dry while we're gluing that and then we can come back and journal oh, what what so <clears throat> now you can see my grid on my cutting mat is that thickness so I just follow my ruler and cut those like that mm. like a quarter inch you know yep okay let me rinse my brush. And I'm going to do the blue Hawaiian on these strips for that side and the orange on these strips for that side. Because why not? I'm not trying to be precious. We're just toning the paper. It's all good. Um, speaking of creativity and having fun, we were talking earlier about a quote. Remember that quote? Yes, by yeah. S was it Seth Godin? Yeah, that one. It was, art is anything that's creative, passionate, and personal. I love that. And I feel like that's what art journaling is for me. It's like I'm passionate about things. I'm putting what I'm excited about in there and capturing memories. I'm having fun. I'm playing with different supplies. So that's covered. We've got creative, passionate, and personal. Yep, because you're making your the memories you're making writing down 
mm -hmm. things that happened this year, your downsides and upsides. Yeah, this is definitely a personal, more personal page. Yeah. I try to include prompts that kind of get us thinking. Yeah, I think you do a good job. Well, thanks. Okay, so we're getting this orange on here. <clears throat> so these little strips of paper can be drying while we collage our helmets on. Yes, I like it. Okay, put these over here for a minute. And they'll buckle a little bit while they dry because we only got paint on one side of the paper, but that's all right because we're going to paste them down and they'll be flat again. Okay, I'm having a hard time picking these up. There we go. You would think they'd be a little more respectful. <laughs> Okay, now this is feeling good to go, all right? I'm take my brush out, my water so I don't ruin my brush. There we go. So your reminder if you left your brush in the water. Okay, so yes paste is the next step. I'm gonna get, move some of this out of my way just because just it's getting messy up here. There we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's because I don't normally have my, here we go. Yes, it feels good <laughs> to have a clean space, so we're good. All right, so like I said, you get yes paste like this, but I'm just gonna go for the big tub of it because it's easier for me. Okay, it's just like butter. Now sometimes if you leave your lid off for a while, it will not be like butter. So if you're not having a butter, buttery experience, you can add a little more water to that because it is reconstitutable. Oh, huh. is that a word? Did you make that up? I'm pretty sure it's a word. <laughs> <laughs> it Perfect. does it is sound now. like it, it's not. I don't know. Now you're making me sick, I guess myself. I don't know. I it reconstitutes do with water. I yeah. think that is appropriate. It's like a zombie glue. It comes back to life if you add oh water. Oh my gosh, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, zombies are crazy, but the glue coming back to life is awesome. Okay. So I'm just gonna put that about right there. So I, wanna, I want to see some of the um, lemon drops from the top coming up. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this a little lower than I thought I was going to just because of that reason. Okay, paste that down nice and even. Looking good. Our next one. And if you get, your fingers get sticky, you can always put them in your paint water and then I, think. I was going to wipe it on my other paper towel, but there's pigment on there and it had the potential and to that get crazy. just spread around. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. I'm going to use a different spot on my cutting mat for this glue one. And I just like to put a little bit on and then scrape it around. If you've been here for a while, you've seen me do this a lot, but this is for you know, the people who are new, maybe this is their first time using Yes Paste and they want to know all the things. Now, what I, the other thing I like about this glue, which I always say, is that it's slow drying and I'm not usually in a hurry. I'm usually in a hurry for everything except for my glue to dry because I want to have some time to decide where I'm putting that thing. So, and that is why I love Yes Paste because I have a minute to slide things around Because you're secretly a fan of zombies. <laughs> Want my glue to stay alive for a little longer then. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, zombies are cool. Well, yeah. Like in the, I'm watching a zombie movie kind of way. If they were real, then I don't think they'd be very cool. They'd be terrifying. Yeah. So that would not be cool. No. Okay. Well, we got that. Do our next one. I'm just going to move my. Just going to glue on another spot so that I'm not sticking glue to the previous piece. From the previous piece, I mean. Will your baby wipes clean up the yes paste? Yes. I That's either nice. have baby wipes or like those other cleaning wipes kind of nearby on my desk that I use all the time. But I will. I'll clean these up with a baby wipe and show you. Good. Idea, Keenan. Nice. Okay, 
So we got to scrape the excess off. It's feeling good. And I'm gonna put this even with this one, like right in there. Yeah, that feels good. You can still see my dots peeking up from behind. I like it. Nice. I like that too. That looks good. Thanks. Just, I love the elements of collage in my journal. I have a lot of fun doing that. Giving it some layered look. And I just like playing with paper and tearing it and gluing it. It's great. Feels good. Now, if this feels too messy for you, you can always use a glue stick. Like, you don't have to do this. I just like it for the reasons that I said. Whoa. All right. Let's get this on there. I like it. My fingers are sticky. All right. Okay, so, <clears throat> oh no, wait. We got one more to glue. I was getting excited. Gotta get the downside. That happens often. <laughs> I get excited and forget what I'm doing. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> I mean, also just that happens here often too. What? We get excited. Yeah, we get excited. Can't help it. It's exciting times. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's on there. Woohoo! Now let's swipe our. Ooh. Cutting that off, I get this. Here we go. Because it's water soluble, it cleans up really nicely. Now, if you let that dry, it'll be a little bit harder to clean. You'll just need extra water. But if it's still in this sticky state that I have going on right now, it comes right off. Then you could just dry it with a paper towel or a towel, whatever you got around. And if you're still worried about it, you can just flip your board over and know that that's that's <laughs> Nailed it. Oh, good. We got more gluing to do, so I'm not gonna do that. Okay. Let's see how dry our paint, painted little strips are. They're still a little, a little bit damp. I'm going to just bend them back the other way to try to get them to be flatter. Okay. Okay. So the journaling part of this, I recommended listing in one column things that were tough and then another column things that were good despite of that. So for example, my downside of 2020, which was I think relatable is isolation. Mm. It was a, totally different experience, <laughs> right? Yep. Um, but my upside to that was I had more time with my, my family, my, my daughters and my husband in our home, and I appreciated more things about our home and just our little interactions that way. And so even though it was tough for things to be different, that was something that I recognized. Nice. So I'm gonna do that one first. I'm gonna write isolation on that one. I'm gonna write more family time on this one. Ooh, yes, go back and forth, good call, good call. Yeah. So, and I used a pencil on this, but you can use a pen. I don't know how well the pencil shows up on camera. Isolation and then, can you think of any, Keenan? Uh, put probably. You on the spot. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, Keenan's quiet now, he's thinking. Is that what that means? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, quiet. Another downside for me was less travel. I really like getting out and going places. Like in my car, on a plane, whenever I can do it, I like doing it. My husband used to work for an airline and we used to fly for free and that was really fun like really fun. Yeah, but I was thinking fun. with uh, less travel, there's been less pollution. So that's like an upside, like a real that's, upside that's to true. that inconvenience. And that's good for our earth for like a minute to recover all the things that we've been doing. So I'm glad I could say that I contributed to that by not traveling. I mean, you know, yeah. I like had a choice, but like it's still, <laughs> I could have. And then um, a downside was less scheduled activities.
And then an upside to that was more personal development. I mean, I couldn't go to movies. We weren't doing like our soccer games and all kinds of things that we normally have lined up and just busy with. And I had more time to reflect for sure. Definitely an upside is spending more time with the girls. Yeah, I mean, some. I mean, it didn't seem like our life was like super busy and complicated until we slowed down, and I was like, "Oh, this feels nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> feels nice." <clears throat> I learned, and we talked about this in one of the other um, projects we did. I learned more recipes because I didn't always have access to the ingredients that I wanted. And so then I got creative with my cooking too. Nice. Actually, I'm gonna do that one next time. So I learned some things from that limitation. And I think that's, um, as a whole, I'd say what my experience was. I learned some things from being limited in different ways. For sure. And I think there's something too, like actually writing these down and thinking about it for a minute that kind of solidifies that, I don't know, that gratitude, that opportunity to reflect, that just, you know, casually thinking about it or talking about it. Um, doesn't necessarily do. That's what I like about journaling. So we're giving ourselves a minute to process like what's happening in a fun, creative way. And I think that's, that's good for us. So hopefully you had more time to journal at least. <laughs> and that was a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> to be year. grateful for things in your journal. Yeah. Yeah. I heard somebody talk about recently, like, yeah, it was a tough year. We don't have to wait for it to be over to be like, it's done. Like we can decide what we want to make of it right now. Like it's not quite over and we can, we can acknowledge the thing, these kind of things and be joyful anyway. <laughs> I like that because it makes me feel like I'm a rebel. I do too. <laughs> no, I'm going to be happy. I'll be happy. I don't care. I have always had a hard time looking at the downside of things. Uh, in the moment, I think I'm good at it. But after like 12 minutes, I only see positive things to every <laughs> situation. So I struggle to look back, reflect on the downside. I only see good things. Yeah, memory is tricky like that, isn't it? It is. Can't trust your memory. That's why we journal. Yes, Keenan, you get it. <laughs> he gets it, y'all. He gets it. Like it. And the thing that I love about doing this with y'all is that you're going to have different things. You're going to have different ideas, um, different um, lists of things that you're processing. And it's so cool to see how everyone approaches something similar in a different way. And I love that. This is our project. We did it, y'all. Beautiful. <laughs> um, I love seeing what you make. And um, we love um, all that sharing in the community. We have a Facebook group with, um, that we share stuff with. And you can find it with Let's Make Art Journals. You can use the hashtag on Instagram. Wherever you are, um, you can um, share this and, and be brave if it's not too personal, because I think it will help somebody else, you know, kind of process what's happened and whatnot. So um, thanks so much for being here and making this with us. And we'll see you next time.